These problems include ADHD, conduct disorder, and oppositional defiant disorder. Separation anxiety is another disorder commonly observed among children. Children mostly suffer from this disorder after an emotional trauma or separation or divorce of their parents. It also occurs more frequently than children whose mothers have been diagnosed with panic disorder. Other childhood problems that can be seen among children are autism and also eating disorders. And if you are suffering from non-insulin-dependent diabetes, regular exercise is always beneficial. It reduces the blood sugar, excess weight, need for medication, and makes the body capable of using insulin better. But before starting your exercise schedule, you must keep three things in mind. Firstly, because any increase in the physical activity can lower your blood sugar level, so you need to plan your meal and medical dosage but do not forget to consult your doctor in this regard. Exercising without the consultation of your doctor is not only dangerous but can be fatal too. Secondly, have regular medical checkups. This will keep you informed about your health status and will also help your doctor in predicting your progress properly. And at last, check your blood sugar level before and after exercising. This is very important as you will get a first-hand knowledge about your sugar level and you'll also come face to face with the benefits or any side effects of the exercise that you are doing. Mostly you'll notice that you'll reap the profits only, but sometimes over-exercising can cause many problems. You see, I'm working part-time and I have to go to work by 4 p.m. So would it be convenient for me to attend classes in the mornings? Can the timings of the classes be changed? I'm afraid you will not be able to take care of two things at the same time. Firstly, the university is very strict as far as attendance in the classes is concerned. And secondly, physics is not an easy subject. So you'll have to revise all that we study in class on a daily basis. If you're working, it becomes really difficult. Oh, okay. Do you have any information regarding the lab timings?
Yes, if you're concerned about changing your lab timings, let me tell you that these are pretty flexible. There are a number of tutorial times that one chooses from, taking his personal circumstances into consideration. Usually a group of five to six students is made and a particular time is assigned to them. Waterborne epidemics are health hazards in the aquatic environment and are mainly due to improper management of water resources. In order to prevent the spread of waterborne infectious diseases, it is up to the public to take adequate precautions. The city water supply should be properly checked and necessary steps taken to disinfect it. Water pipes should be checked regularly for leaks and cracks. At home, the water should be boiled, filtered or other methods and necessary steps taken to ensure that it is free from infection. Impaired memory is a phenomenon that occurs when there is a loss of events registered in the mind. A person usually faces impaired memory after suffering from a head injury. Another factor that causes one's memory to be impaired is the age factor. As a person gets older, his memory deteriorates. People with impaired memory forget names of their relatives, friends, and in extreme cases, their own identity and profession. When a person experiences all of the above symptoms, he is said to be suffering from an impaired memory.
The cells, or the building blocks of muscles, are actually fibers. This watery fibrous substance, in turn, contains proteins. The proteins contained in the cells of our muscles cause them to contract. When we contract our muscles, all the muscle fibers are shortened in length and increased in width. In order for muscles to grow, three things are required. Number one, stimulus. Exercise is needed to make the muscles work, use energy, and cause microscopic damage to the fibers. Number two, nutrition. After intensive exercise, the muscles need to replenish their stores of fuel. And number three, rest. It is during the rest or recovery phase that the muscles repair the microscopic damage and grow.